Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in our last session, I showed you how to set up and install the Unified Service Desk Client for Microsoft Dynamics CRM, as well as how to run the USD Package Deployer to get some sample data and a baseline configuration that you can use for the application. In today's session, we're going to show you how to actually use the Unified Service Desk Client and what it looks like with the base configuration loaded. So what are the different objects that make up how things work? And then in a future video, we'll actually show you how to go into CRM and use the configuration tools within CRM to configure figure how this behavior works within the actual USD client itself. So let's first just take a look at what happened when we ran the package deployer in our CRM environment. So within there now, if I go into settings and solutions, I will see three baseline solutions that have been added. The USD CRM 2013 SP1 with product updates, the Dynamic Unified, or Dynamics Unified Service Desk, and the UII for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. These are the solutions that basically allow you to configure the application using the CRM interface. And so with those three solutions installed, if you ever want to get rid of the functionality, you basically would have to remove remove these solutions just like you would remove any other managed solution. But they will now give you an area in your application called Unified Service Desk. And this is just a combination of different entities within the application that you can use to configure the USD client interface for your users. So whatever changes you make in here on these entities by adding or removing specific items will directly correlate with what the users will see in the application. Now in a future video, we'll show you how that actually pushes over, but I at least wanted you to see from a CRM perspective what happens to your CRM organization to allow that USD functionality to transfer over and take place. So you can go ahead and you can just initiate the application by double clicking on the Unified Service Desk icon. If it's the first time you're connecting using the client, it'll prompt you for credentials just like we did when we installed it. Once you've connected successfully to an environment that has USD installed, it'll just remember those credentials moving forward. So if I go ahead and double click on this, I've already connected this to an organization in the past, and so it's going to connect using my credentials. If I want to change credentials or connect to a different online instance, I can click on change credentials and it'll bring me to my login screen. From here, I can just supply my login credentials. And if I have multiple organizations associated with this account, I could display the list of available organizations and then choose which particular one I want to work with. In this case, I don't have any additional organizations associated with this login. So I'll just go ahead and click on login and it'll log me into the application. It does take you know a few seconds to actually load the configuration and then actually go on in and load the application specifically if there was a configuration change so don't be alarmed if it takes you know 30 seconds to even even up to a minute in some cases to initially load that scenario it's just walking through the configuration so this is what a USD instance looks like after it has been attached to an organization that has the USD package deployer with product updates or whatever the situation is installed on it so this is the baseline information for the application itself. Now you can see that it loads into a customer service dashboard. One of the things that you'll see from a USD perspective, all of this is customizable. So I can pick and choose which dashboard in the application I want to load within this configuration because it really is just using URL addressable forms to display this data as it loads into the item. So what you see here with this dashboard is what's referred to as a hosted control. In Think of a hosted control as very similar to an iframe in regards to this is what you want to load into this window. And so these hosted controls could be web pages from other applications, they could be CRM pages, they could be custom developed hosted applications that are connecting into other legacy systems, but they represent objects that you want to load into the USD shell or into the USD framework. And so each time that I click on a specific option or I do something in the application, I am in essence interacting with what are called hosted controls. Up here you will see a toolbar. Toolbars in USD can be at an application level or they can actually be configured at a hosted control level. So you will see a lot of different toolbar options within the application. You can create your own specific toolbars for items that you want to work with and attach them to other hosted controls that you would be working with in the application. So each one of these 
options that I see on this main toolbar will in essence launch a hosted control that I can interact with. And so when I click on search, I am launching a hosted control called search. And now this search hosted control has a toolbar associated with it. And this toolbar has different items that I can interact with. And in essence, each one of these is linking to a CRM view for a specific entity. So I can click on this particular item and it will allow me to see exactly what's happening for those options. And then I have a view where I can search that information. So if I click on accounts and I open up the account view, now I can go ahead and select a specific record and it is now going to open this record up within USD. Now, one of the nice things about this is you'll notice that I now have another tab that has opened up for this particular record. USD uses a lot of what are called sessions. And so these sessions will allow you to take specific information and group it together based upon the task at hand. And so now that I have a session open for a datum corporation, it assumes that anything I do within this session is going to be directly related to a datum corporation. So if I have other applications that maybe I'm loading based upon clicks that I make, or I have other CRM views or items that I'm interacting with, all of that information is going to be loaded within this session. If I were to go ahead and click on search, search is considered a global hosted control. So search actually allows me to open up a tab no matter where I am within the USD session. And let's say I click on, for example, adventure work cycles or adventure work sample. This is now going to launch adventure work sample and it is actually going to open them up in a separate session. And so now I could have multiple items opened up based upon what it is that I'm trying to work with. And it would be specific to adventure work sample. If I now switch to a datum corporation, now I am working with the tab specific to that particular record that I want to work with. And now I can see that this opens up what's called the account hosted control, which has an overview of all the account information. But in here, I now have another custom toolbar that has been developed to allow me to access things like associated cases and associated contacts. And so if I click on associated contacts, this is going to open up another tab within that same window that will show me all of the contacts that are associated with this customer. And now if I want to quickly get back to the Adatum Corporation, I can click on their tab and now I can get very quickly back into that particular record without having to close or open multiple windows. Same thing here. I can click on associated cases. It opens up another tab and then this would link to all of the different cases that are associated with this particular record, but they all stay open until I manually decide that I either want to close them down or until I close the entire session as a whole, which in essence would close everything down. So let's say I want to do that. Now I'm done with a datum corporation. I go ahead and I click on the X for a datum corporation and it closes down everything. It closes down the session and then any tabs that were open within that session. And that would include any tabs that were hosting, you know, external applications or applications outside of the scope of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Now, this is just a very quick overview into some of the intro concepts, the, the hosted controls, the session tabs, and, and baseline information from there. In the next video, we'll continue on with the demo and we'll show you how to use what are called session overview lines and talk a little bit more about Windows navigation. So you really get kind of a true understanding of, from an application perspective, what USD does. But hopefully this gives you a good starting point to see the potential where USD could be used in any type of customer service situation, you know, particularly call centers or, or those types of things, but, but anywhere where you potentially would need to have multiple records open at one time and to have multiple pieces of information for those records open to be able to quickly be able to service that customer no matter what the need. So that's going to conclude part one of our unified service desk demonstration in next week's video. Like I said, we'll go ahead and show you how to do session overview lines, talk a little bit about what those are, talk a little bit about windows navigation rules and how events feed into everything before we move on and start talking about how to actually configure this functionality through the CRM interface. So again, thanks for watching. This is Derek and I hope to see you real soon. Take care and have a good one.